Hello NASCAR fans, Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring you another DFS NASCAR preview video. Before we get into the video, if you're not a RotorPros member yet, get over to RotorPros.com today. Um, you can see our free articles are here as well as our video showing you a little bit about our Slack chat to get into that Slack chat and access to my cheat sheets as well as our one-on-one -on -one coaching with our multiple coaches. We cover multiple sports as well. You can go to the top right hand corner sign up button. We've got a weekly, monthly and yearly membership option and different trials for so it's a three-day trial for a weekly membership and a seven-day trial for a monthly and yearly membership and if you use promo code chris today you will also get 50 percent off on your first purchase whether it be a weekly monthly or yearly subscription we're here to help you grow with more than just lineups so get over to rotorpros.com today and let's succeed together let's get into this week's race 11 races down since the return to racing and 15 races for the season we're nearing the end of the regular season races are becoming bigger and this week nascar goes to indianapolis motor speedway for the big machine hand sanitizer 400 unlike yesterday which the xfinity series ran the road course we are on the oval this time the two and a half mile oval uh, nine degrees of banking so it's a flat track uh, can be compared much like last week with pocono two and a half mile uh, flat in terms of the corners but of, of course with only three turns of pocono it is quite different so a lot i'm, I'm going to show you my model here in just a second there's 160 laps in the race that's broken down into 50 laps for stage one and two 60 laps for stage three that's 400 miles of the race so we're going to jump into the cheat sheet here we're going to have a look i'm going to show you my four core plays for the race um, so first of all we're going to jump over and look at the model so i've got 10 uh, percent on qualifying 15 on qualifying inverse that's just a way to give us um, some place differential um, then we got 30 percent on track history over the last two years career track history track type history which again is only 10 percent this week because pocono and indy are quite a bit different in terms of the, the setups and stuff the only thing they really have in common is the length and that they're both flat uh, in terms of the banking and then we're gonna look 25 percent into form and how guys have been doing the other thing on the sheet that you can look at is the track history detailed showing you each of the last 10 races and then you go down to the bottom you can look at the correlation from start to finish so you can see last year's race there wasn't a ton of correlation uh, harvick dominated from the opening spot but as you can see out of the top 10 there was only four drivers who started top 10 that ended up finishing there um, so there was some place differential to be had there was one driver led 100 plus harvick was actually the only driver that led more than 20 he dominated uh, showing you total quality passes for the race to kind of show you how easy it was to pass i guess in, in relation to other races so we'll go back and look at 2018 as well so the correlation was very high to start to finish which is usually the norm here um quite tough at pass normally passing in terms of you know comparing it to other races the the laps led was totally different story than 2019 four drivers uh, led 20 plus no driver led 50 plus versus harvick who was the only driver who led 20 plus last year that was the new rules package so we may be i might be looking a little bit more to the 2019 results um to the results before that but still i'm going to be looking at all track history so you can also look at the entry list if you're interested in looking at uh, who's on what team who's in which camp or whatever this is more for like your talladegas and daytonas when you get a lot of teamwork and stuff like that but you can always reference it here as well and then we'll jump into the fantasy matrix um, soon here too but we're going to get into the four core plays that i've got so obviously number one in my model this week is going to be kevin harvick as you can see he's finished eighth or better in six straight here he won the last race here dominated last year um leading i believe it was 113 laps we'll go back and look at that 118 laps he led last year so he's been awesome here very consistent Go and look at his starting position this week he is starting 11 so we do get that place differential upside um, career track history he's got 19 career races here two wins 13 top tens and 19 races is incredible 321 laps led and an average finishing position of 9.0 track type history which is looking at pocono indy uh he's right there with two wins three top fives tied with denny hamlin in that respect he does have more dominator points obviously in that uh current form him and denny both have three wins so they're going to be my top two plays easily they're one two in the model they're you know they're the only two drivers with multiple wins on this track type over the last two years they're the only drivers with three wins since racing returned 11 races ago as you can see hamlin's got eight top fives um, but Harvick and him both have eight top tens. 
Harvick's got a few more laps led, and then average finishing position. Harvick's got him a little bit there. Um, scoring in terms of FanDuel has been about the same. DraftKings, uh, Harvick's got the edge just because of the, um, you know, the starting position in some of those races. He's picked up some good place differential points. So that's I'm looking at him as a one-two. Um, him and Hamlin, they're going to be my top guys. The fact that Hamlin you know, falls down a little bit in terms of price. And he hasn't been as good as Harvick here. He's still looking for that first career win here. Um, but he's been red hot, like I said. He's been red hot on this track type. You know, that takes in Pocono into account, but that is the two and a half mile flat tracks. 12.4 average finish is still pretty darn good here over a 14 race career. And he has finished sixth or better in five of his last six. So looking at those two over on the fantasy matrix, I've got them both plugged in for about 50 laps led each and you can if you make your own copy of the sheet you can definitely play with this matrix a little bit and and the copy that you will make will show more than four drivers i just wanted to show my my core drivers here um and i also wanted to hide some of the information from you know non-members just to show the actual members um not just giving this stuff away for free here so if you want all the information definitely go over to my patreon page over to the roto pros or over to dfsr.com get your subscriptions and sign up you can get access to all the data that is on these sheets going back to harvick and hamlin a top five finish is going to get them both if they get around that 50 you know 40 to 50 laps led a top five finish is going to get them 50 plus dk points which puts hamlin in that 5x value return uh harvick's going to need a little bit more i do have him kind of in that top three so 60 plus is going to kind of get him right around there what we're looking for in terms of value return from those guys easily one of them could dominate um and get up there you know I, I give it more chance that Harvick is going to be the dominator and get towards that 100 laps led again. I just don't see any individual driver getting 100 plus. I do see two drivers, and it's Hamlin and Harvick, obviously, that are going to lead 50 plus. We may see three drivers or four drivers lead 20 plus again for sure. Um, but I don't think we're going to see a dominator like we had Harvick last year. So then jumping into my next two picks, we'll jump into that 9K range. I like Clint Boyer. He comes in here with back to back top fives at this track. Uh, top sixes in three of his last five so he's got some up and down results as you can see here he hasn't had a career win here but a decent 13.5 average finish over 14 races so right there with hamlin in terms of that one place different he's got two top fives four top tens and five races on the pocono and indy races going back to the start of last year since the return of racing this year He's been a little bit up and down, but what is very good to see is that he comes in with back-to-back -to -back top 10s, a 7th and an 8th place finish at Pocono the last two weeks after finishing outside the top 10 in four straight races. So it's good to see him get back in form. He's coming back to a track he's had success at recently. He starts 22nd, so we're going to get some place differential upside. So looking at him on the fantasy matrix, say we even get him at a 15th place finish, that's 36 fantasy points. Um, that's a pretty solid floor right there. I think he's definitely higher than that. We're looking at a 4x return at a 15th place finish with no fast laps or laps led. I think he's kind of looking at a top 10 finish. So if he even gets to a 10th place finish, um, we're looking at 5.1x return. And I think he's even got that 5th place upside again. So we're looking at pretty big upside for there from him starting 22nd. I really like Boyer tomorrow. Ryan Newman fourth guy i'm going to talk about here he's number eight in my model he's only 5900 the fact that we're getting a guy that's top 10 in my model which is really like i showed you looking at a bit of qualifying um some place differential upside track history career track history track type history and then even form putting that all together getting a driver that's top 10 in the model under 6k just seems like a bit of a steal on DraftKings. even at 7300 on FanDuel, i'm a fan he is starting 14th um, so we're not getting max place differential upside there with him. Since the return of racing, he hasn't got a top 10 yet. Eight of his 11 races finished with a top 20. Average finish of 18.4. Um, recently, looking at him, he's coming in with an 18th and a 15th at Pocono. 24th and 30th at Talladega and Homestead. And then before that, he was actually very consistent. 12th at Martinsville. 14th at Atlanta. 15th at Bristol. 17th at Charlotte. And looking at his track history here, he's finished with top 10s in three straight, 11th or better in eight of his last nine. So I've kind of got him pegged in. I think a nice safe floor for him is right around that uh, starting position for him, uh, which is 14th, which is 30 points, which is 5x. Um, I think we can definitely get a 14th out of him. I think he's got top 10 upside. So we're looking at uh, 10th place of 38 points. 
um, we take that into account. That's six and a half X return. And I think he's even got more upside. I think we can get probably see his high right around fifth to eighth, somewhere in there, um, right around that 40 fantasy points. So he's going to be a darn near lock for me. Um, probably going to be one of the guys that I'm going to have 40 to 50, 55% exposure to, um, and in play in all formats this week. So those are my four core plays. Um, like I said, if you want more information, definitely head over to my Patreon, over to rotopros.com or to dfsr.com. Get your memberships for those today. Hit me up in the chat rooms. I am pretty much available right up in to lock and after lock to report on some ownership as well. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe below. A lot more coming down the line. And let's go get some green screens this week. Good luck, everyone.